like I said at the last um, status report, we're looking at our next update to be uh, towards the end of February. Now, whether that's uh, experimental, iterative, or a stable branch, that remains to be seen. It really depends on how things look internally. But we're looking at putting the first of 0 .60 in the consumer's hands to check it out and start figuring out what's going on at the end of next month. And our, our internal goals, what we really hope for, and granted, this this is in development. Anything could happen. We could we could find a, a moderately <laughs> a moderately serious issue. Thanks, Walter. Um, or it could just be butter smooth. Uh, but to be very clear, what I mean with that is .60 for us. Our intent is to have the first iteration of the new render out there uh, to replace the old legacy render, which means that you know we'll need to be running DX11 on all the machines. Mm -hmm. We've allowed people, despite our system requirements, to run DX9 for a while, but that is not going to work anymore once we push out the new render. It is it is 11 with uh, our future goal to support 12. So that said, I didn't want to talk too much about uh, kind of performance gains we're seeing with the new render because, again, this has only been tested internally on the hardware we have, the settings we have. Uh, there's, there's literally hundreds of thousands of people that cycle through DAISY every month. Like, you might, you might see, say, between... I don't know, 14 to 20,000 concurrents, but of those concurrents, it's a much larger pool cycling in and out. So it's a huge hardware base to ensure that you know, both so hardware and software configurations are working properly. And that's why I'm very hesitant to commit to any specific gains. But we've been looking at, you know, as, as Yuji, my associate producer, mentioned earlier, we've been looking at some dense scenes, and we are seeing upwards of 100 plus frames. Now, that's mid-range on a mid-range mid settings on a mid-range card, and that is in a dense scene. I, I'm not 100% sure if that's the new Cherno or Nova or areas like um, uh, Berezino and so on and so forth, but it is a typically lower performing area. So things are looking good. They are looking much, much better. Uh, I wanted to show before, before, we, came, uh, before we came out, uh, I wanted to show before we came out um, a video, but uh, our lead engine programmer, uh, Philip, uh, goes by Fido, interesting nickname, uh, wanted to make sure that uh, the performance he saw in the new Chernogorsk, which is a, a big thing we've been waiting on pushing to the consumers because of the render, mm -hmm. uh, was, was smooth enough. Because, you know, he jumped in there and he's, you know, I, I, I see some issues here with the fluters we can make work better, so... That's pretty much what's been holding up me showing a video of that. Uh, we still want to do the, um, the the monthly or bi-weekly, depending on the frequency, uh, videos where we show things in-game before they're ready to be in the consumer's hands. And uh, that's pretty much one of the major things I wanted to put in there. We wanted to talk about how the new render is starting to look. We wanted to talk about skinning or adding functionality to the new UI to get uh, to get exactly where it, it should be. And... Um, uh, on, in addition to that, I wanted to show some, some new user action functionality on, on how the, the fluid user actions work, not be locked into the old animation system. I wanted to show uh, some changes to the, uh, the vehicle simulation and so on and so forth. There's a whole bunch of things I wanted to show people in progress uh, that we're going to probably end up slapping together as soon as I get back in progress. which will be the first week of, of February. But in addition to the new renderer uh, with uh, our goals for .60, we want to see the first few iterations of the new UI out there. Because the existing new UI, it's, it's, it's as I've said before, it's, it's programmer art. You know, it's, it's pure tech. There has not been any design uh, functionality put in there. In fact, I think some people have been, uh, been messaging me on Twitter saying, hey, you know, the new UI, I, I hate it because I can't drag items off in the vicinity, mm -hmm. you know, once I kill someone, because that's what you do in Daisy, is you kill people. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, the new, uh, the that that specific bug is, you know, it's, it's already been resolved. There's a, there's a whole series of things that I'm looking forward to uh, to seeing how the consumers react to it. In regards to Namalsk, uh, with Namalsk, that map is actually that is a that is a community created map. It's it's not an island island in the in the speak era of. Uh, army titles that we have any ownership of. That said, uh, the author of Namalsk, Adam, the original author of, of Namalsk from uh, Nightstalkers.cz. Uh. Anyways, before, let me finish my thought about uh, Namalsk. Uh, Adam, the gentleman that made Namalsk, is, uh, he's, he's actually one of our environment artists that work on Shinaris Plus. 
So one of the really? things, yeah, one of the things we talked about initially when we brought him on was was having Adam kind of be uh, the man that feels out uh, the tool set for modding on Daisy. It gives him an opportunity to update his uh, Namal specifically mm. to function with Daisy, so that when we do roll out modding, that Namalsk will be one of the first things, assuming that Adam mm. still wants to do it, but I'm pretty sure he does. One of the first mods that'll be fully, entirely fleshed out and ready for Daisy. So when he pushes Namalsk out to the marketplace, he should have, last time I checked, I don't want to spoil anything for Adam, because he's been working hard on it, but I've seen he's got some custom items, new buildings, he's completely redone Namalsk so that every structure's enterable. Do oh you man, remember, that's gonna be good. Do you remember the, um, I forget the name of the object, but the, the base uh, down... Uh, down between the two mountains in the mosque, where mm -hmm. you can go underground, the tunnels and stuff. They've com he's completely redone that. He's completely redone. Really? That. Yes. I won't go into what he's done, but it has been completely I'm redone. Hyped. Yeah, it looked pretty damn awesome. It looked pretty damn awesome. As I said about the new player control and the damage system, these are things that I want to talk about in the uh, the upcoming dev video. Uh, so. Oh, that's gonna be good. Yeah, that's I'm excited good. to hear some uh, to player control stuff to, to all the uh, Russians. Um. Yeah, no, I'm pretty excited. As far as the new damage system goes, I think that's... It's, I don't necessarily think you're going to see a major gameplay change. You're going to see less bugs and maybe less uh, exploits related to damage implications. Um, but I think on a security side, and as far as Daisy's tech for Daisy, rather than using repurposed tech from other titles, this is going to be huge. I mean, it's the difference between... Um, Fists being treated as a projectile in the legacy system to fists actually having their own damage model and being configured properly. So oh, they are fists, nice. and they cannot be, you know, I don't know, machine guns. All right. So, anyways, we were talking about um, we were talking about Namalsk and then segueing into uh, Hello Jenko, segueing back into uh, talking about the new render and the new UI. Uh, I do want to take the opportunity to talk about the little bird. So people were asking about the little bird. What's going on with the little bird? The first. Helicopter. The model itself is all but ready. It's just a matter of us configuring uh, the the actual physics simulation in multiplayer. It's been configured to work in single player right now, but it has to be set up in multiplayer. It's a, it's a mess in multiplayer right now. So the I team mean, just get in there, and get it ready. Everybody's excited to set up an ambush over a little bird. Just yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty everybody. excited. We've also got uh, we've also got um, laid out as a priority uh, fairly soon. We want to get the artists on top of the fixed wing aircraft. Because we want to at least get as soon as possible each type of variation of, of major aircraft. So your bicycle, your helicopter, your fixed wing, your boat, that kind of stuff. To get things mixed up a bit. I know um, the bicycle is just all about done, model-wise. It's just a matter of getting programmer time to get, make sure that is uh, configured properly, physics-wise. It was a big, um, a big undertaking for us uh, from the get-go when we, we put Daisy into early access was the difference between using the legacy Arma 2 uh, physics and vehicle simulation and deciding, no, we're going to put the time in and try and get it to where we want it to be. If you remember, there I mean, there pretty much was no physics and a very basic vehicle simulation in Arma mm -hmm. 2. And we, we thought we could do a lot better if we just put the time into it, for lack of a better word. And, you know, you'll start to see things. I mean, you already see handling differences. Yeah. I mean, for the most part, vehicles kind of stick to the road in Arma 2 and and uh, the way they behave is, is completely different. Now, we're nowhere near where we want it to be for Daisy. I mean, it's buggy as all hell, of course. That's because we're nowhere near being done. In addition to the vehicle simulation to continue to be iterated upon while we're in development, uh, the gentleman uh, that leads that part of the team responsible for that is they're actually working on finishing operational fluids and additional parts so we can have that finalized set of what is required for a vehicle to work, uh, be it... I believe off the top of my head, I know Peter's going to kill me uh, for not going off of a sheet of paper for this, but we, I know we wanted to do, in addition to fuel, we wanted to split fuel potentially into diesel and petrol or gasoline. Uh, we have spark plugs and uh, glow plugs, plugs and batteries. Yeah. We wanted to add a drive belt, potentially an alternator or radiator in there. We wanted things to be a little bit more in-depth, but not too far. Like Pairing, pairing that, the, the functionality of the vehicle and how quickly it is to repair it, how many parts it requires, goes hand in hand with the continued development of the economy and making sure that the parts are varied enough and spread out across Trinaris enough that it takes you some time to do it, but it's not too much. It's a constant back and forth with Daisy as, as we, as we uh, try to keep the, the title as enjoyable as possible while it's still being developed. It's a constant back and forth of, uh, 
you know, is this too hard? Is this too in depth? Is this too easy? You know, we swing back and forth all the time. I could remember talking to to Break. You know Break, right? Yep. Yeah, I remember Absolutely. talking to Break, break. and him just giving me grief about how easy it was to find food. And then you know, I tweaked it a little bit, tuned it back one way, and then the next, you know, the next week when that build was out there, I had plenty of people just gnashing teeth. Oh, I'm starving! And and then came the uh, the classic Hicks quote: "Just pick apples. Just pick mm -hmm. apples." <laughs> I mean, I, I think people have actually started to understand the apple thing now, which is fantastic. Yeah. I think apples are apple trees and getting resources from the ground. All right, so Alter, uh, specifically in relation to what we're talking about here, make sure the stream can see this. I'm pretty sure you guys can see this. You can see this on stage here. I was talking with Peter before he left, and we were talking about um, we wanted uh, – we're continuing work on, on server-wide communication because we didn't want to just throw side chat out there and – and do the quick and easy way. I mean, I'm sure people operating mods will be able to turn side chat back on if they want to. I mean, the, the, the low-level type of functionality that N4 Script has, people are going to be able to do crazy stuff to Daisy. But when it comes to the vanilla experience, we don't want to just make it cheap and just throw side chat or global chat back, back in there. We wanted it to try and, and, and feel organic within the world. And that's why, uh, wh why I'm looking at Alter here. Peter uh, and the design team have been working on... Um, broadcast stations, radio stations that people Ooh. can go to and broadcast across the whole map and they can be picked up on, on civilian radios, they can be picked up on walkies and so on and so forth. Uh, so it's kind of a control point for controlling uh, communications over the server. And we thought, we were talking about you know, where we wanted to put it and you know I don't think we finalized on this, but Peter and I both agree we thought Alter was a perfect spot. It's going to require the environment team to go in and, and clear out the existing house that's there, but it's, it's a, a very nice high point one of the things I like about, about Alter specifically is the hill that it's on is um, it's very bare around it. There's a little bit of trees up top, but for the most part, it's got a wide approach. You can see people coming from all angles, coming mm -hmm. from Gorka, coming from Devil's Castle. I'm pretty sure you can see Devil's Castle from Alter. So the, the art team, I'll pull that folder back up, have been working on oh. the, open this? the new structure model for the radio station. Now this is untextured, mind you. I don't have a problem showing untextured because uh, to, to go back to Rust, they seem to be able to pull it off just fine. So why don't we do it? So this is the untextured radio station. It's modeled after a couple um, inspirational radio stations we pulled from real world, like uh, some US-based ones, some Soviet ones, some, some, some uh, abandoned uh, ones like the Ukraine and so on and so forth. And you know, I can't read Cyrillic, but we did, I believe we did settle on a logo and a, uh, a name for the station. And again, this is going to be located, uh, the intent is for this to be located in Alter, which as you see is just, just a little outside of Gorka, Rashino. It's kind of a centralized point in the map. It allows uh, rapid access from most areas. Originally, I was thinking about putting it up near Star Yar, up north. Right. But we didn't want to put too much of that stuff that we thought everybody should be able to access too far from the, the player spawns, right? And up north pretty much meant that it's only going to be geared people there, or vehicular people there. We wanted to give it a chance if you were able to grab the resources to make it over there. That's going to be nice. I mean, you said multiple or just one? Just one. Just one centralized radio station. Okay. Now. now, there's other areas to the advanced communication we're still working on. The megaphone, for example. You know, the megaphone's tech work, uh, I believe, I believe was finished a little bit before I left, which means the design team still needs to work on it. But, you know, we need to test it and so on and so forth. But we wanted to support megaphones to allow you to, in, in, in urban areas, to broadcast a voice loudly over a small area but not hit the whole server. Mm -hmm. you know? Kind of, uh, I guess, lock, uh, you know, lock Carl and his big old bushy beard into, uh, into a building. And you can, you know, uh, hold yourself a little, you know, get a police car out there, have a standoff, you know, come on. I like this idea. Up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's things you can do. There's plenty of things you can do. But, uh, I, you know, I'm going a little bit a little bit off uh, off here with the uh, the communication stuff. We'll talk more about that when that's ready. Um, no, you cannot play old branches of Daisy. It's just not technically feasible. Uh, there's more than just the client that would need to, need to function there. Uh, yes, uh, to quick... Uh, Quick, a uh, couple questions here. Yes, the the VoIP. I don't think we're really happy with the VoIP. I can't promise that it's going to be taken care of by early access release, but it's something we're we're definitely looking looking into. I don't think Peter or I are very happy with with the VoIP. Uh, as far as server performance, that's going to be something that we're going to continue to be working on up until we hit 1.0. Like uh, I don't I don't think there's any point in which it's too good, right? So it can only get better. 
Like, uh, we're just going to constantly be pushing on that. Uh, I've been speaking again with Brake about mm -hmm. uh, the whole concept of, of trying to find the right balance between ammunition and weapons. And kind of the, the one thing that's always... Always... Oh, people don't read. Uh, the one thing that's always been there is um, magazines have just been constantly difficult to find. And when you find yeah. them, they're, they're full, right? Yep. And uh, when I was talking with Peter about this, because uh, recently been doing a lot of you know, discussion of looking towards beta where a lot of the optimization of bug fixing and balancing comes, right? Mm -hmm. And how we're going to approach this. And looking back on, on all the data we have over the last two years of early access on how things worked when we went either way with things, you know, made things more common, more rare, and so on and so forth, is we wanted to try and go ahead and add some um, elements of randomization to the uh, volume of magazine quantity. So it's going to be much more common to find an empty magazine than a magazine that has ammunition in it. We'll, we'll rely on finding ammunition to put in that magazine, mostly on the boxes and those piles of ammo, which allows us to increase the quantity of magazine spawned to pair with weapons. So it's much easier to find that, uh, all right, I found a magazine for this and this weapon. Now I just need to look for ammo instead of... <sighs> like it, Is that from also... A, from a gameplay perspective, from my perspective, it seems fascinating to see people have to make that tactical decision with chambering, right? Right. You know, like, I've got this weapon, I'm in this gunfight, and I'm chambering. I've seen you do it with a, a sporter, for Christ's sake, you know? Um, but for the leg or the tail of the game, as the expression goes, it's, it's not continuously rewarding. You need to be right. able to, to give people a little bit more access to that weapon becoming something they can defend themselves with. So we're going to try uh, having the CLE start spawning uh, empty or near empty magazines so that we can increase the quantity of the magazines for each weapon. Okay. That also should pair with the attachments, randomization of attachments, which is very similar to how vehicles should be working. They should spawn with random parts. A lot of them right now don't. They all tend to spawn, for the most part, with no doors, no hood, no tires, but fuel, right? right. Um, they're supposed to be spawning, just like in the mod, with a randomized state. You might find a vehicle with four tires that are damaged and a little gas, but no spark plug or battery. Or, you know, you might find all the parts, but maybe three of the tires are ruined. Right. And that, that same tech is to be used on, on uh, weapon attachments. Instead of finding just, like when you find an M4 when they're spawning properly, instead of finding just this one M4, you could find an M4 with, you know, uh, an ACOG on it. You Ooh, find nice. an M4 nice. with, uh, you know, some kind of red dot and a wrist. You find an M4 with uh, a different buttstock and maybe, uh, I don't know, a 60 round mag or a drum mag or something along those lines. So that is coupled, the, the mags occasionally spawning with the yes. weapon. Yes. Goes. yes. Would that be. Beside the weapon or just in the weapon, most likely? Well, when magazines are spawned by themselves, they could be anywhere that, that would be... Uh, because the buildings have these... If you look at the, the mesh of the building, they have these proxy points, these memory points, where the spawn system knows you know these three points are defined as weapons. So in this area, this is where weapons can spawn. So they'll, the magazines still have a chance to spawn on points defined as ammunition, I think is the category for that, or ammo. I could be wrong. It's been a little while since I've looked at it. And uh, then there's also the additional possibility of them spawning as an attachment to the weapon. Okay. So that can go on many, many number of. That'd times. be nice. Yeah, I'm personally looking forward to that. Um, a couple of the issues that we noticed um, going out the gate when, uh, like for example, this I absolutely love this. I absolutely love this. Recently, uh, one of our broadcasters, uh, Sacriel, has been really advocating the feedback tracker, and it's personally allowed me to get some, some outstanding repro steps and bug data coming in from both people that watch his channel and his content to just other people that, that happen to follow him and see him doing it going, I should do that too. So you know, a good example of that is um, he put in a, a ticket not too long ago about, um, about uh, commonality in, in the spawning system. So like if you're up at the Northwest Airfield and you're at the tents, um, he, put in a, he put in very uh, specific examples of like on these servers, you're going to see all these filled with this this item, right? And we got, you know, we got IPs, we got repro steps. So I was able to take QA and hunt down the storage files for the servers, the logs for those servers, and give all that raw data to um, uh, to the programmers responsible for that, which was outstanding. Because, you know, we tried to rep reproduce it internally, and we just couldn't do it, and it was in the wild where it was really coming from. And yeah. getting that data from all those users, they put, they used the feedback tracker, 
They gave us good repro steps. They gave us screenshots, server IPs, continued to add notes, and uh, we figured it out. Like we, I think we figured out what the issue was. Uh, there was some, there was some, uh, let's let's say, um, multiple uses on tags that weren't required. It was confusing the system, so we ended up doing a full audit of the tagging system on the economy. And, uh, and then we, after doing that, we isolated that there were some points that were just not getting populated. And now, after running more tests and, and addressing the bugs, we're seeing the proper quantity that is defined in the mission file spawning in the world. And that's what early access is all about, right? Outstandingly, yes. That is what early access is about. It's getting, getting that kind of stuff. It, it made my day, honestly. It, uh, I hope he continues to do it, and I hope you do the same. <coughs> And don't assume. I'm, I'm busy. Just because we make the game. I'm busy killing everything. you with the sledgehammer. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that is true. That is true. <laughs> All right. So we have about we have about 15 minutes left. So I wanted to take the opportunity to go circle back and talk about um, about the the new render and um, the the goals we have coming from point six zero and uh, the new UI and where we want to go with that. Uh, so. I'll touch on the UI first since I didn't. I, I spent more time talking about the render. As far as the new UI, I mean that that doesn't just include the inventory screen. That that includes the server browser. That includes the main menu. That in includes all our dialog boxes, our uh, options menus. Uh, that includes our loading screens. And uh, before I left, I think over the last few weeks, I've been sitting down and uh, and going over uh, how the functionality uh, should operate on both for myself and Peter and what we wanted. We've 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 reached, I think, uh, some outstanding, outstanding designs. Despite the fact that in the mockups, I'm gonna call him out on this. My lead game designer used Comic Sans in the mockups. Comic Sans font. Nice. Yeah, yeah. He puts this up on screen in the meeting room, like Peter. That's Comic Sans. <laughs> like, the only thing you could have done worse was Papyrus. Uh, it was horrible. Uh, but um, so yeah, we we settled on a, a main menu uh, that really pushes home the statistics of Daisy, like the global statistics. Like, you know, this is your story. This is how long you survived. This is how cool. what this character has done. Um, it also identifies, you know, some, uh, some, some quick data that will get you in-game as far as, you know, I'll, I've played on server A, B, and C before. I have characters there. As long as they're officials, you, know, you can tab through. You see your character in his gear, switch through different characters. Instead of just seeing, like on the legacy menu, you just see the one that you played most recently, that, that data is stored locally. This will allow you, to, it'll start storing that stuff um, locally from the servers you play on, so you can view multiple characters, whether they're dead or alive, and so on nice. and so forth. Um, and then moving into, and moving into the, um, moving into the, uh, the server browser, the big, um, the big deal w for me was, and again, I don't want to give too much credit to Gary Newman and, the, and, and his team on Rust, but I really liked looking at their server browser, how very clear it was uh, what was an official game server, what was a community game server, what was a mod, it was, I didn't have to know any server names or structures or anything, it was just very easy to understand. And I thought for a title that that is so dependent on the service, like that, that persistent hive, the shared experience on official servers, that it was important that people, when they install Daisy and they get in, they don't, because I get this question all the time, mm -hmm. they don't get confused about what is an official server run by Bohemia and what is, you know, Joe's Crab Shack 5,000 and fours, you know? Yeah. That, th <laughs> it, it's, it's, you know, credit to the people that have asked me that question. It's very confusing. So we've, we've broken it into some, some hard filters that can't be disabled of, you know, the first tab when you, when you, when you hit play and you see that server browser, you see a list of Bohemia run vanilla Daisy experience. Nice. That's, they're all in the same hive. You know, they might be on like, um, uh, first person and third person, but they're all Bohemia. Mm -hmm. You know that, that uh, there's not going to be any unscheduled restarts, not going to be unscheduled wipes. This is the official experience. And then the next tab is community. And that'll be anything that, uh, because we, we plan on, again, we plan on releasing our both our server binaries and the actual Hive package. Mm -hmm. So people can run their own Hive if they want to, just like they did in the mod. Yeah. That's so going to be really important whenever. Yeah. It'll allow you full control over all the same tools that we had, um, we have now with Daisy. So people will be able. You know, if they're running their own community server, they'll be able to uh, change, you know, how the frequency spawns, the location of players spawn. I mean, there's just so much they'll be able to change there. Parts, rarity, and vehicle spawns, dynamic events. It's, it's, it's pretty outstanding. Even to go so far as have access to frequency and quantity of infected in their spawns and their positions, it's, it's wonderful. 
Um, but uh, putting that out there, uh, that, that community tab is very important because it there's there's uh, iconography and like a legend that allows you to quickly understand and sort what you're dealing with with community servers. Now these are only vanilla DayZ, right? They're they're, right. they're 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 not modded servers, but the owners can modify certain values within the game. You know, uh, economy stuff, server uptime, you know, the, the rules give more control for people that want to be in that tab. Now that tab. You know, that's not the first thing you see again. The first thing you see is the official tab. You have to navigate over there and find your friend's server. And then there's a third tab, and that's mods. And that will be every, anything that that, uh, that is listed in our server browser, our, our, our Steam whitelisting API, that is running something from the Steam Workshop. And you'll be able to filter based upon, through the launcher, the stuff that, uh, because we're doing an external launcher, you'll be able to filter only the mods you have installed. You can view all of the mods in general, like every server. Uh, there'll be a nice little button in there so you can navigate to the Steam Workshop. But so you got that one, oh, two, three it's punch. So sweet. It's just it should be very easily understood. Um, now, as far as the in-game UI, uh, the inventory screen, <coughs> there was there's there's been a lot of back and forth on the design of that. You've seen uh, Jan Tomaschik, uh, one of our designers, he's put up on the forums some of his uh, some of his um, his concepts, his early mock-ups. And it, right now, it's just a matter of us getting getting that iteratively skinned and the functionality added in. And you'll start to see that over the coming months, past February, into versions past that, where we start dialing that in. But, you know, be, be very aware that uh, most of the major issues we notice functionality and gameplay-wise from the non-skinned programmer art, just pure tech uh, new UI, have been resolved. Our goal is to get this as functional uh into the into the consumer's hands for hopefully point six zero, so that we can kill off the legacy UI and really focus on getting the new UI functional as it should be, knocking those bugs out. And again, not to circle too far back on the whole people using the feedback tracker, but recently, uh, one of the things that got put into the new UI as we we're looking to start moving that over to the to replace the legacy UI was the option to filter chat messages, broadcast messages. You can filter now. Uh, battle eye messages, server messages, direct chat, vehicle chat, anything that can be typed and displayed on your screen, aside from your own status messages, which are needed to survive, can be disabled. I'm excited about that. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it helps. It helps. It's, it's By default, they're turned on, so server operators won't have to worry about information uh, about about their uh, server not being viewed natively. But if someone you know has the experience with Daisy and wants to turn that off, they can and again, on the new UI, before we uh, before I take a couple minutes to circle back to the new render, I saw someone asking about the status messages, and specifically the uh, the UI that you'll see if you're using the new UI right now, the little UI elements down below that kind of look like they harken back to Daisy Mod. You've seen them, the, right. the blood drop, and then so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to make sure that we didn't go again. We we. We didn't want to go too far into that arcade. We didn't want to go too far into the simulation. The text messages and the UI elements within the inventory screen, they work. I, they've worked for two years. People can understand it. But one of the things I, I, I noticed going over my VODs and going over other people's VODs from around summer 2012, call it the heyday of, of uh, Daisy Mod being streamed on Twitch, when just, there was tons of people doing it, is... A lot of how to navigate the world and figure out the systems of Daisy were communicated without text, without large UI elements, with just indicators, like little, um, like for example, the little ear icon. You remember the ear icon? Yep. And th those bars would increase when you change the type of terrain you were on, and you learned rather quickly. Oh, I'm making more noise. That's how the infected are hearing me. Mm -hmm. And and elements like that I thought were were critical to be like a, an out of the box experience, but. For those that don't like it, and there's probably plenty that have gotten into that hardcore, I don't want to see any UI elements. Just like the quick bar, it can be toggled off. You don't have to see nice. it. Nice. But it's there, and it also allows us to provide for people that prefer playing in third person. Uh, like, for example, in your vehicles. It allows us to, when you're in a vehicle, add some new elements to that, that minimized uh, UI down below. So you can see what gear you're in when you're driving Ooh. a manual vehicle. Yeah, you can see what your, all your critical dial information on the dash should be communicated there. Things like your stamina, just a very small little bar in the corner. It's very minimalist UI that only provides you the information you need at the moment, and you can still opt out of it. And that will be functional a little bit after the new UI gets put in, because that's dependent upon the new player controller 
new user actions, new animation system, all getting moved in and replacing the legacy. Because that's where it gets its cues from, is that completely rewritten uh, action system, which is all now in N4 script instead of an SQF. Man, I'm so excited for all the stuff ahead. There's so many big things. 2015 Daisy. for us was, like internally it was a pretty stressful year because there was a lot of, of tech work and audit on like technical debt that we had to do to figure out where we need to be to get the title to the experience we want and had to make a lot of hard decisions on like, you know, this is going to take some time to get this done or our initial iteration, you know, we were wrong. We needed to we need to change this up a bit and move more towards this kind of system. And that that's what twenty fifteen was for us. I mean sure we got some good stuff out there. You know, we got the, the, the central economy really started finally humming properly, persistence started saving. There's a lot of iteration on the vehicle simulation and, and a lot of new content that went out there, continued updates to Battle Eye. But internally, like everybody it's 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 every morning, every evening it's on our minds, stuff like the new render, the new UI server performance, um, the new animation system, player actions, user actions. These are major things that will have a massive change on how Daisy is played. And, uh, you know, nobody wants people to see it more than we do. You know, we gotta, we got to spend the time to do it right. So uh, we got a couple minutes here, so why don't we go ahead and take a, try and take a couple questions uh, from chat. Uh, will you remove the stones? We need to, oh, he's, uh, it's Renee. Uh, so Renee is talking about uh, altar. There's there's actually an altar up there of stones, like in a demonic, yeah. demonic altar. Mm -hmm. And he's um, he's wondering if that's going away. Uh, I'd like to keep it. I'd like to keep it, but it's really up to Senshi and the environment team. There are a couple others as well. Yeah, around, there are a couple so. others. I know. Right? There's a couple. Ah, so uh, Waylon Yutani. These, these guys are uh, pretty cool. Uh, I don't know they have a YouTube channel. I think they're a community. They're asking about uh, powering streetlights. So I can't really go too far into that, but I know that um, uh, Peter actually right now, before I left, was finalizing some of the design and functionality uh, for the Bratislava gameplay designers for the generator and the electric fence. And uh, let's just say there's a lot of stuff that they're working on to evolve what a player camp is in DayZ. Um, that was, it was one of the things that I felt that we could really since we have the time, uh, expand upon from Daisy, Daisy Mod. Like Daisy Mod, it was tense, right? It was tense, it was sandbags, yep. Yep. it was hedgehogs, it was concertina wire. And that was it. That was it. Yeah, oh, vehicles, you know. Yeah. That, that was it. And one of the things that I find is, is repeated the most, both in mods of Daisy and in other survival games, is giving people more, more of an opportunity to have a physical presence in the world, right? And I, I don't, I don't want to see us go too far down. I mean, there's some titles that I, in, I enjoy, but I don't like their building mechanics, mm -hmm. where the structures, they just, the textures repeat too much, and they just look like a little too like that. Just sticks out like a sore thumb. Mm -hmm. And after watching our art teams, uh, both locally and our, our um, external artists, turn out some really naturalistic looking. I mean, even look at Chernaris. It looks lived in, right? It looks right. Even though we repeat buildings often because of you know just the nature of development, it still looks lived in. It looks natural, and that gave me a lot of confidence that I think we can pull off player-built structures that are distinctly different from the in-world structures that you see, yet look natural. So no sky bases, is what you're no saying. No sky bases. <laughs> no sky bases. And you know, no no crazy giant uh, buildings that look like it was a city. Mm -hmm. But I think there's something there. I think there's something there for us. Uh, I think there's something there for us uh, as far as allowing people to have an impact on the world. Cool. Let's uh, see if we can take a couple extra questions. Better thunder lightning. Uh, you know, uh, horror view. If you caught, was it? It was not in the last status report. It was a status report before Christmas. I did show at least one screenshot of the new rain. The rain effects are changing. Oh my God! Yes. It looks so good too. I, I really liked it. I really liked it. Yeah. Uh, dynamic events, you know, we, we, we've been talking about it, some new dynamic events is not really a priority. The system is there and functioning. Um, one of the documentation pieces that are being put together uh, by Adam, the gentleman who's responsible for the mosque, is kind of a, it will be a basic guide on, on, for, on how to, for modders, to use the dynamic event system to quickly configure their own dynamic event that they can have the central servlet spawn uh, all over the place. So. Maybe not from us initially. There's some stuff we'd like to try, but uh, 
Like this, it's wide open. It's one of the most easily configurable systems uh, for Daisy. What so about um, um, you mentioned at TwitchCon a little bit about uh, contaminated areas? Contaminated. Is train. there any more that you can talk about? So it? We were talking about doing that up at TC, right? That's that mm -hmm. military base way up north. And uh, I was talking with Senshi, our environment artist, a little bit before I left. And it looks like all our major structures are done there. It's just a matter of sitting down with the game design team now mm -hmm. and talking about getting that, uh, I guess, call it a damage over time area of effect mm -hmm. uh, set up to those, those actual corpses. We've got several tiered. We decided to go with several different tiers of sizes of corpse piles so that the environment team can actually use them outside of TC. So maybe there's you know a pile of burned corpses in the middle of a village or something, mm -hmm. you know, just to continue nice. to allow yeah, them to make the world good. look a little more lived in. But um, I think really now it's just a matter of sitting down with the game design team and talking about how they want to configure that that um, that slow burn if you don't have a hazmat suit when you enter TC. So I think the initial implementation of TC might not have it, uh, but it'll definitely get done. Uh, it'll definitely get done probably right around beta. I'm thinking. That's gonna be good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, play, uh, sounds good by player. Sound different than indoors. So as far as sound goes, I don't want to overpromise here, because we're we're still waiting to, to move some of this tech over. But we sat down with some of the some of the programmers in Bohemia, some of the guys from Arma, some of the guys from other titles, about some changes to the sound system that we can move over to Daisy. Some of the tech we can inherit from Arma 3, and uh, some of the changes that we ourselves can get made. And I know that we're looking uh, to merge that in. Hopefully, maybe late February, early March. Once that gets in, <laughs> poor sound designers are going to have so much work to do. Fortunately, it is, uh, it's cross-compatible with the, the legacy uh, configuration settings, like on how sounds are configured before. So I don't think we're going to like break anything immediately, but adding that depth, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to take uh, you know, maybe a couple months and start seeing some progress there. But I think, yes, I think there's going to be some, some definite improvement. Because personally, I, I think we could do a lot better. I think we could do a lot better when it comes to sounds. I think sounds are absolutely critical. I recently um, I picked up Squad. Have you played Squad? Mm -hmm. I really like some of their sounds in there. Like it wasn't authentic. Well, I mean, it wasn't realistic. It was authentic. Like there were some points in which I'm like, that's that's not what that sounds like. But it's still like the feeling. Enough to get you the in. Suck you in. It, I was immersed. Yeah. And I think that was what was important. Because sometimes you need to take a little uh, a little um, suspension of disbelief, right? You need to get into it. A right. Bit. It's just like a film. A good film. Anyways, a uh, couple questions before we're off here. Oh, we're technically off. So I guess one more question. Uh, do, 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 do. Will the PSO respond on its own again? Yes, I can answer that. Yes, it will. And about the backpack I was teasing in the foul video. I don't know what I was teasing, but we did track down a backpack recently that slipped through the production pipeline that'll probably be added in to spawn a military backpack be added in to spawn with the next uh, the next uh, push to stable. Any any of the any of the new weapons maybe? Any of the new weapons? Yeah. Well, I mean, I have to be very careful about trademarks, right? Mm -hmm. But um, oh, Peter's gonna kill me. I'm sorry, Peter. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So you know that that gun, uh, the the scout in um, in Counter Strike? Yeah. 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 Oh, I like really? That gun. I like that gun. You like that gun, do yeah, you? I like that gun. That's that's. That's yeah. nice. I, I think I'm um, looking at for us a uh, a NATO um, uh, a NATO uh, long range weapon would be ideal. But there's there's plenty more guns coming. There's gonna be Obviously, a lot of people excited about that. We've been recently talking about the uh, the light machine gun, the support weapons. We've got the 249 coming, the PKM coming. I'm pretty excited about that. I think I know Break, for example, has been uh, been messaging me every now and then. So where's the 249? Anyway, where's yeah, the 249? Yeah. Yeah. He would. I remember he tore it up with that thing in day zero. Yep, yep. And uh, I guess on the on the final note, um, keep in mind, people, that uh, when it comes to sway and hold breath and, and the gunplay, a lot of that is going to come when we start dealing with balance and beta. Um, but we are talking about it more now. We're very more, uh, I guess, cognizantly aware of it. We are thinking about it a lot more now that we're getting closer to that phase. So uh, the way it operates now is not how we want it to. We're looking for a happy medium. It's going to take a lot of tweaks. So just be patient and file those bugs on the feedback tracker. I cannot begin to tell you how helpful that is. 